Imagine your text gradually moving across the screen, creating a sense of depth and movement that captivates your audience. With Parallax Effect, you can easily achieve it. Are you ready to take your text animation to next level? Well, in this video, I'll walk you through the step-by-step -step process of creating this stunning smooth scrolling text animation effect on your website. Without further ado, let's start. Hello and Namaste everyone. This is Jitsaru with Coding Design. Welcome to our channel. If you are new here, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. Let's create an extra HTML file. Within that, I am just writing basic HTML code. For the title, let's give moving text parallelly on a scroll. And within the body tag, let's create a section element. And within that, I am creating two H1 headings. And in between these two headings, let's give image. For the source, I'm giving game.png. So as you can see within the same folder, I do have two different images with file format of PNG. You can duplicate the same image element and bring it down there. The reason for giving this second image, it's because I only scroll my page. So for that, there must be enough content in order to scroll. So for that purpose only, I'm giving this second image. Now with the help of live server extension, let's open this file within our browser. As you can see, this is the result. There are very few lines of CSS code, so I'm just using internal CSS. For that, just below the title tag, let's give the style tag. And within that, for our inversion selector, in order to prevent browse default margin and padding and box sizing, I'm just giving this value. Now let's style as one heading. Let's give text transform to uppercase. And also I'm using font sort and property. So this first value represents the font width. And for our font size, let's give 4.8 rem for the font family. Let's give pop-ins. If it's not available, then we'll give sans serif. I just wanna bring all the text of our heading in a single line. So let's give white space to no wrap. And let's take our browser to the full screen. Let's take these two headings in front of this first image. So for that, I'm just going to use position. Therefore, for the first heading, let's give class of first. And for the second heading, let's give class of second. For the heading with class name first, let's give the text color to hot pink. And for our as on heading, let's give position of absolute. Now we can take our first head into proper position. I just want to give top to 10 rem and for our left, let's give 0. Similarly, it's time to give the position for our second heading. For that, you can select the same code and duplicate it. And instead of that class first, you can change it to second. Let's change top value to 22 rem and instead of that left, let's give right. And also we don't need that text cover. Instead, I want to give outline. So it's kind of trick. Let me show you how it is done. First of all, I'll give text field color to transparent. Okay, browser may not support. So for that, I'm giving the WebKit prefix. And you need to give the another CSS property, which is the text stroke. So again, I'm using the WebKit prefix. So for the first value, let's give the stroke width. I'm giving one pixel. And for our color, let's give this black color. Now with the help of these two lines of code, you'll be able to give outline to your text, which looks pretty cool. I just want to take that second heading to just back side of this image. For that, I just want to give G index of minus 100. Now let's bring these two images to center of our page. For that, for the body, let's give text align to center. Okay, this is exactly what I want. Now, when you scroll your page, we need to move these two headings parallelly. We just want some kind of movement, okay? So in order to create that, now we need to take the help of JavaScript code. Again, there are very few lines of JavaScript code, so I'm using internal JavaScript. Just above the end of body tag, let's create a script tag. And within that, we'll select this H1 heading. For that, let's create constant variable headings. And I'm assigning document.querySelector all. Be careful, I'm using their query selector all and within that let's give the section element and within that section element we do have two ads on heading. So we are selecting that both headings. Now whenever you are scrolling your page, we need to listen to a scroll event. So for that, for our window, let's give the add event listener function and within that we are listening to the scroll event. And for the second parameter, let's give the function. I'm giving handle scroll. So now it's time to create that function name handle scroll. As soon as when you scroll your page, oh, first of all, let's create variable name scrolled and I'm assigning window.scrolly. With the help of this code, you will be able to store the scrolled value. So let me show you in the console. 
as you can see when you scroll your page you will be able to get that scroll value which is in pixels okay now we can manipulate our headings position with the help of this scroll value so let me show you now if i write headings within that square bracket i'm giving zero so with the help of this code you will be able to select that first heading which is within our section element and with the help of one you will be able to select the second heading i just want to change the left position of our first heading so for that i'm writing dot style dot left and i'm assigning so why am i doing that as you can see for our heading with class name first we have used their left and initially its value is zero and later on we'll change that right position of our second heading as well so now you can assign their back tick so this is what you call template literals now within that i'm writing dollar curly bracket and now you can pass that scroll value i mean the variable but if you just pass that scroll value then our headings they will move really quickly i just want to slow down its speed so for that i'm dividing by three and now just outside of that bracket i'll give percent so that represents the css unit there is no any kind of white space so just be careful now you can duplicate the same code so now in order to select second heading instead of that zero you can give one we are changing the right position so instead of that left let's give right and leave everything as it is in your browser you can see you will be able to move your headings but there is another issue because of that change in the position our headings they are overflowing because of that you will be able to get horizontal scroll as well so in order to prevent that for our section element as you can see for our action heading we have given their position of absolute and its parent element which is the section element so let's give position of related to the section element and in order to prevent that overflow let's give overflow to hidden okay this is exactly what i want i just want to give some smooth transition so for our action heading let's give transition i just want to give the duration of 0.3 second and for our timing function i'm giving cubic bezier okay vs code is suggesting me some values of cubic bezier i just want to use this value Now you can see the movement of our headings they are a bit smooth and i just want to show you one thing when you scroll your page even though our headings they are not visible on our screen we are still updating our position of headings so that may affect in the performance so in order to prevent that i'm giving if condition for the condition let's give if our scroll value if that is less than 403 pixels then we'll change position of our headings based on that scroll value otherwise we won't so now for the last time let's look at the browser let's take it to full screen and now if you scroll did you see that you'll be able to get that beautiful parallax effect what do you think about this animation so now you can apply this animation to your project so that's all for today thank you so much for watching this video if you did learn something smash that like button if you have any kind of queries let me know in the comment box share this video if you think someone needs it and also if you haven't already ate hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell icon remember there is always more to learn so keep learning